Ahoy there digital makers, uh, welcome back to a bonus features video for the Deep Sea Sushi project which is part of our Out at Sea theme. Uh, if you haven't finished the original project, the one that I did with my first mate Xavier previously, then I suggest you head back to rpf.io slash home and have a look at that video uh, before coming to this one because we're going to be adding to that game. And that we got it stable, me and Zay, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit to that game to make it slightly more complicated, a little bit more tricky for your player to play. Uh, and so what we'll do is, if you watch along now, we'll crack on with Scratch and you can just see how I change those things to make it a little bit more difficult and interesting. So here's our Scratch project and you can see that we've got our shark with his simple movement code on it. And here's our muffin with the more complicated code on. And at the moment, the way we have it set up is that forever, our muffin is going to move 10 steps. Xavier put in a wait of zero seconds because he likes it to move quickly, which is totally fine. Uh, if it's on the edge, it will bounce back so it will never disappear off into the edges of your screen where you can't find it. And then it will turn a random amount and move those steps again. And so just to have a look and see how that does, right, we'll do is we'll click go and you can see it moving around in kind of a tight spiral where it is. And then it touches my shark and appears somewhere else. Okay, and then it sort of hangs around exactly where it is all the time. Now there are a few ways that we can change the way that muffin moves and I'll show you the most basic ones first and then we'll really do some changes to our code that will make it work much more nicely in the way that I think it should work. So what we'll do is we'll stop our game here and you can see that I've got these blocks in our forever loop. Now I can move the number of steps it takes, I can change that number, I can change the number of time or the amount of seconds that it waits before it takes those steps and I can change the number of degrees in the angle that it turns. Now I don't really want to change the degrees in the angle, that's totally fine the way it is, but what I do want to change is, and I'll show you how it works, so if I open it up now, I can change the number of steps my muffin takes. So at the moment it's 10, if I move it to 20, you see it starts moving further, I can move it to 30, even further again, right, 40, and it starts really zipping around my screen, okay? Now that's cool, but once you start making too many large jumps with the muffin, eventually you don't even have to move the shark, as you'll see, and I can start winning the game, right? Because the muffin is jumping around so far all the time that there's no real challenge in it for the shark. It could just sit there and wait until the muffin runs into it. So I don't really want to do that. What I would like to do, I'm going to keep it around about 10 steps because that's a nice little hovering animation. It sort of appears and hovers around the place, and I like that. So. Let's say we do make our steps quite big, okay? So I'll show you another one. We'll make our steps quite big, 50 steps, it's moving. Now what I could do is I could slow down how often it takes those steps. Okay, so you can see it moving a little bit further. Okay, so I'd have to move my shark to chase it. And it's sort of, you know, taking still be taking big hops around the screen, but it's not moving as quickly. It doesn't feel as random, but it also doesn't look as cool, right? It sort of stops, it stops, it stops. It looks kind of janky. So what I want to do, is I'm going to take my weight and add it back down to zero seconds. I'm going to leave my steps as a small number like 10. But I'm going to make another piece of code that in there that means that what it will do is it will hover in that place and then it will pick a new place on the screen and go and hover over there in a new place and a new place and a new place. Okay, so I'm going to change that there. Now the way we do that is I'm going to take my if touching shark loop and pull it out of my motion loop. Okay, I want to take it out and make a whole new script out of it. To do that, I'm going to close it in a forever block and then I'm going to grab a green flag click block. And now that there, we don't need to touch that anymore. This script here is completely isolated, it stands alone, and what it does is it detects if my shark touches the muffin, and then it should give me a point and move the muffin to a new place. Brilliant, I don't need to mess with that anymore, that's totally fine. The one we do want to work on is this top one. Okay, so this top one here currently has it moving 10 steps and hovering around, which is fine, but what I really want it to do is I want it to hover in that place for a few seconds, and then I want it to jump to somewhere else. So to do that, I'm going to grab my repeat block and put it inside my forever block. The repeat 10 is fine, but with no seconds waiting, it's going to be very, very quick. So we might want to up that repeat to, let's say, 20 to start with as our test. And once it's done these things 20 times, and so once it's moved 10 steps and bounced 20 times, I want it to find somewhere new. And to do that, I grab a motion brick, and I go to random position, and I simply clip that in outside my repeat loop, but inside my forever loop. And what that does now is it has forever, it will do that 20 times and then it will move somewhere else on the screen. So let's have a look and see how that works. So it's doing its hover and then it goes somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. Okay, so let's test it. Oh, got away from me. Oh, got away from me, there we go. Oh, it jumped into me that time. Cool. Okay, 
So we can see that that's sort of like moving around and it's nice and quick, and that's pretty cool. It works fine. Um, but maybe I could change this repeat number, okay? So if I have that repeat number go up, the bigger that number is, the longer my muffin will stay in that same area, okay? So what it will do is it will repeat that movement more times, so 20 times and then move. Or I could change it to 30 times and then move, or 50 times and then move, okay? And that's how it's gonna slow my game down. You can also add bigger steps, you can add more weights if you wanna change those things. But right now, I really like that hover animation. I like the idea that it moves 10 steps, it sort of looks like it's spinning around in a little circle and then it jumps somewhere else. So I quite like the way that works, but I found that while I'm playing that, the controls on my shark are a little janky to drive. So trying to use the, the arrow keys to try and drive my game is making it very slow. It makes it hard for me to get to where the muffins are. So we could add a new control system. What we could do is we could go to our shark here and we grab an events block when green flag clicked and then I'm going to go to control and I want a forever and what I want it to do is I always want to, I'm going to use the mouse to drive my shark now so I'm going to put the mouse where I want it and the shark will drive towards it okay and so to do that I'm going to grab my point towards okay so I want it to point towards mouse pointer which is exactly what I want it to go for we could cheat and say point towards muffin if you want uh, because then the shark will basically just be on auto drive and it will always drive towards wherever the muffin is automatically but it's not fun that's just an animation so we're going to point towards mouse pointer and then we're going to have it move 10 steps okay and remember we're setting our rotation style left right so it will always stay hovering and now when we do it okay I can drive the mouse all right now, he's moving quite quickly, so I could tell him to move less steps, right? Watch how that changes it. Makes my shark move much slower, although it might be too slow for the game to actually be functional. So let's change that number again. Let's change it to five steps and see how much faster it goes. There we go, now we're talking. Okay. Cool. So what we've done there is we've made our game a little bit more tricky, but we've also added a much smoother control system for the shark, which is nice. So that's this bonus features video, everybody, just showing you how to add a little bit more to it. Come back again, watch our second bonus features video, and I'll show you how to make the game harder as the score gets bigger. So as you get to a certain score point, we're going to make the game go even harder again, all right, just to keep it interesting for your players. So come along there, everybody. Keep sharing your work with us at rpf.io slash home. We love to see the crazy stuff you make. If you've made a game that's like this, but it has dinosaur eating tacos or a cowboy catching aliens, send it in to us. We'd love to see it. You can share all that stuff with us again at rpf.io slash home. And don't forget to tune into all of our other videos with Mark and Christina every week. Keep making awesome stuff while you're at home. Catch you later, guys. Bye.